Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a bit late, but I'm going to record session four of this Python tutorial. Um, so without further ado, let's get straight into Visual Studio Code and get started. Okay, so this episode is about object-oriented programming. Um, so this is a concept that's used throughout uh, software engineering coding just to create reusable code um, that's easy to read um, and has kind of good structure as well. Other languages like Java and C++ may display this in a better way, but you could still do it in Python and it's still quite useful. So let's just go straight into that. So just to start off with, um, we have a basic class here and on line 10 and 11, we basically start to work with this class. So with objects oriented programming, just think of a class as a template for a type of object in real life that you're trying to model. And of course, an object then is just an example of that class. What do I mean by that? So if you have a person like this class person, um, and then, you know, on line 10, I've made a person object. So, you know, this object is of a type person. So let's say John Doe. So a person who's called John Doe is obviously a human. He is a person. Um, and I'm also a person called Ilak. So we are two different objects, but we are both people and we're both a person. So that's kind of how to think about classes and objects. So in this case, to create an object of a class, like I've done on line 10, you need to do something called instantiate um, or construct. So as it sounds, you're gonna build an object of this version. In this constructor, I've just passed F name and L name, and you need to pass self. And that just basically says you have to pass two variables um, to create this um, object of this class. And then these variables go here into the self of that object. So only that inst instance of the object will have that data that you pass in. So I'm the only one called Ilak and I'm an object and John Doe is the only John Doe, but there's probably plenty John Doe's, but you know, you get the point. And we have this method here on line six, which is print name. And that belongs to the uh, you know class person. So let's say, or we'll use instead of print name, we'll say say name, you know. So so if I had a function called say name, if I said my name is Ilak, um, that's what I would do. I'd say my name is Ilak and I'd use my name and my variables that belong to me, um, or my attributes that belong to me and say them. And John Doe would not say my name is Ilak, John Doe would say my name is John Doe. So that's how that would work in terms of accessing that object's variables. And here we have uh, line 10, 11, where we use um, object-oriented programming and access that object once we've created it. So let me just run this Python file. So you just see down there that we created a object um, with John Doe and we printed John Doe's name out. Okay, so very briefly, I'm gonna go through inheritance. Um, with other languages like Java or C++, you can do more complicated inheritance, but we're just going to go through um, some basic stuff with Python. And let's just say here, the example that I use, we have class person, um, which is the parent class. And then we have a student, which is the child class. And, you know, how, how does inheritance work? So you, like you inherit qualities from your parents, like probably your skin color, um, maybe languages you're able to speak what you learn them from your parents um but your genetics um and different things like that that you inherit um that's just how you do it with python is you'd have a class which has certain properties and if you want the child class to have similar properties and build upon more or you know change different things um then you can basically just define the, the child class and inherit everything from the person class so you don't have to rewrite all that code again. So you can also have multiple chains of inheritance. So like one, two, three levels, four levels, however many levels you want. And also you could um, have multiple inheritance. So inherit from two parents rather than one or you know two different 
child classes inherit from the parent. So in this case, just to quickly cover, we have the person class and then we just have a student class which inherits from a person. And we just have a graduation year that we provide and a welcome method. And then what we do in 19 and 20, line 19 and 20, is we just create a student object and we just access the welcome um, method. And what I could also do is also print the name just so you could see how it works and that the child, uh, the child object can actually access parent methods because it's inherited them. So let me just run the code. Okay, so down here you can see the welcome function has been completed. It just says welcome and then beave stobs and then to the class of and the graduation year we set, which is 2024 and then print name, which is beave stobs. Um, okay, so that's inherited. Okay, so we're just going to go over something called polymorphism. And that just builds on what I was talking about with inheritance and having multiple versions of a parent class. And you can just see here straight away that we have three classes, um, the top class being the animal class, which is basically the base class, um, and then all the parent class, and then the children classes, which inherit the parents' makeup template and properties um, of dog and also cat. So obviously a dog and a cat are animals. And in this case, they speak, they obviously say different things. So on line 17, line 23, a dog says wolf, a uh, wolf, and a cat says meow. Um, so what we're gonna do is just on line 27 and 28, we just create objects um, and we give them names. So a dog object and a cat object. And then we just speak for both of those objects and then we also printed the cat object just to show you how this method on line six works, um, which just, if you print an object in Python, you can get some data out and set it um, in whatever way you want. So, you know, like on line seven, we formatted that the name will come back of whatever object it is. So I'll just run this. Okay, um, and we've just got here that Buddy says Wolf, who's a dog. See, that's what we set. And we set the name to Buddy on line 27. And then Whiskers says Meow, who's on line 28, and it's a cat. Um, and then also we printed um, the Whiskers object, the cat object, which is Whiskers. And then obviously Whiskers' name there. That was session four. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of a quick one. And we can get on session five, um, which I hope you enjoy as well.